Overwatch 2 Competitive is about to get a pretty huge overhaul. Blizzard has now released part 2 of their dev blog which further elaborates their struggles with matchmaking. If you missed part 1, to summarize, they broke down why games felt so unbalanced and the struggle with new players. To be honest, it felt very lackluster and underwhelming because it didn't give us as much clarity as we liked. That more so is where part 2 comes in. But if you enjoyed today's video, smash a like button and let's go ahead and hop right into it. To start things off, the reason why matches felt so one-sided is likely because of how common grouping is. There aren't many players who enjoy playing by themselves. Me personally, I don't mind it, but I'm a pretty weird guy. But anyway, the reason grouping messes with matchmaking is due to having varying MMRs within your group. Since matches are not formed based on your visual rank, such as silver, gold, platinum, and rather are made using your MMR, which is completely invisible value that we are not allowed to see for what I assume is because players could abuse this. The massive flaw with this is what we are experiencing right now where the system cannot properly match teams because there is too wide of a range of MMRs. MMR. So the fix they will be implementing to change this is so that pairing will be based off of MMR of the individual of each role. What this means is that if your tank is gold but their MMR is equal to someone that is plat, the opposing team's tank will also be equivalent to the MMR of your tank. So regardless of what the visual rank of your tank is, because of the way matchmaking works, the MMR of your tank will be equivalent to the MMR of the opposing tank. This is a huge change because it will help prevent tank diffs as much as they are because right now the way overwatch is played tank obviously is the most important role if you don't have a good tank you're literally just going to lose the game this same exact concept is going to apply to both dps and support i really don't understand why this wasn't implemented as soon as overwatch 2 launched let alone when roll queue was introduced into the game considering that the tank is literally only one player and as i just stated it is the most important role in the game. This seems like something that should have been pretty obvious to do from the get go. Now the next pretty big change that is being made is how fast your rank updates. Currently you need either 7 wins or 20 losses in order to update your rank. Starting season 3 you will now only need 5 wins or 15 losses and come mid season they will be updating the competitive UI to let you know how close you are in order to change your competitive tier. Ironically enough these are the exact changes that I propose all the way back in November. I don't know why this took them so long but it, I'm glad that it's here now. 7 wins was just way too much considering how unbalanced the teams were. This led to you losing more than you likely would have with fair teams and causing the 7 wins to drag out much longer than they should have. This would also keep you in your rank longer since you would lose more games than you probably should have. It's just a whole big mess and if you're wondering why don't they just go back to the old system since yeah the old system did work and people did like it they've already confirmed that this isn't going to happen they enjoy the idea of this system and they think the idea is better than their previous one um, but they do believe that they do need to fine tune it to make it a much better experience for everyone else because apparently with the old system players would get stressed out seeing their sr fall and maybe because of all the new players that they've expected to join the game they didn't want them to either lose those players because they felt like they were getting discouraged from seeing their SR fall or discouraging their vets because, you know, these new players could be costing them their SR. It's just a whole big thing. So where if they just keep it hidden, it makes it easier on everyone, including them. Regardless, every other game shows your points or rank or SR, whatever, falling and gaining after each game. I don't understand why we're trying to protect this so much, but... It, it is what it is. Furthermore, for you top 500 kings and queens out there, your rank will now update after each game instead of after every seven wins. They're also planning to add a change in season four that will remove the rank reset in the cave at the beginning of each season. I'm curious how this is going to work because we can't just stay the same rank forever. So maybe at the beginning of the season, we'll run placement games again. That one's pretty confusing, but if you have any ideas, leave that in the comment section below. To close off the blog post, they left us with an FAQ. So the first one they're responding to is if they force 50% win rates and loss rates. And according to them, they don't force a 50% win rate. Now, the only reason I find this one fishy is because in part one, they stated that they implemented a change that brought new players win rates all the way up towards 50% from around 20 to 30%. Now, I'm no mathematician, but if you're taking away from somewhere, it's got to come from something. So if these win rates are increasing, wouldn't that also mean that other players are losing more now? 
in this regard, the math isn't mathing for me. I feel like maybe they didn't really understand the question or something, but if new players are winning more, that means some players are losing more at the same time. So you're going to feel as if these are forced. Maybe they're not intentionally doing that, but it does seem like that's the effect that it's having. There's a few more questions in there that you can read below, but the one I want to finish off here with is that they highlight that apparently your MMR is not based on your performance at all. Now, when I say performance, I mean your stats. Nothing about them matter, according to Blizzard. They claim that this would be hard to rank because each support has a different role, like off healer or main healer. So then how do you tell if they're doing well or not? This also makes sense because certain DPS heroes are not necessarily designed to pump out damage like others. Like I wouldn't expect Tracer to put up the same levels of damage as Sojourn. So for these exact reasons, the stats just don't matter. Now they could mitigate this by just taking the average from each hero and comparing them. So if you take a diamond level Sojourn versus a plat level Sojourn, well, if your stats are beyond plat level, then maybe that's how they rank you up. Um, but the issue with doing this though, is that if you were to change your hero after playing them for maybe like two minutes within the game and you didn't perform well, that would tank your averages. So this is something that I actually do kind of believe them on. I do think that the, your stats really just don't matter as much. Obviously they're going to play an impact on if you win your game or not, but in terms of whether you rank up or not, it doesn't seem like they matter. Basically, what I'm saying is don't stress too much about your stats. This is something that I've been guilty of because I believed that they did matter. Um, but according to them, it just doesn't. Now, that doesn't mean to keep throwing your fights or getting out of position because all of that can contribute to your losses. Simply just use your stats as a metric to understand how you're performing versus the rest of the lobby. If you enjoyed today's video, please consider leaving a like on it. And if you want to come back and see more Overwatch content, smash that sub button and I'll see you guys in the next video.